Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you taking time to watch this presentation on Elite Smith's Energy Gene Therapy product. My name is Sun Young Kim, the founder and CEO of the company. Electimix being a public company, I would like you to read the forward-looking statement shown in this slide at some point. The slide shows the highlight of the company. Eliximis has a strong platform in gene therapy, uh, developing a number of novel gene medicines using its own proprietary technologies. And secondly, we are very active a late stage clinical development company conducting several phase threes and phase twos in the US. And thirdly, HX Helixmith achieved many firsts with flagged product called Envensis or VM202. Envensis is the first gene medicine for pain in general that entered phase three, as well as the neuropathic pain specifically. It is also the first gene therapy that targeting a highly prevalent disease to receive our designation from FDA. If our ongoing phase threes produce satisfactory data, VM202 has the potential to become the first plasmid DNA-based drug for humans. Elixmits has been a public company since 2006, listed, listed on Korea's coast stock market. Approximately 190 employees are working for the company, 120 at Seoul headquarters and are in the center, and about 70 people in San Diego, a 24 clinical development, and another 50 in GMP manufacturing. Our gene therapy program is based on the three delivery system, a plasmid DNA, AAB, and retrovirus mediated, uh, mediated T cells, namely CAR T using our in-house developed vector technologies. With the plasmid DNA, we target a variety of ischemic and neuromuscular diseases. With AAB, several muscular diseases, and including ARS, and with CAR-T, the particular emphasis is given to solid tumors. In addition, we recently established a program devoted to ALS called ART. To this program, three candidates have been developed are being considered for phase one in the USA. As I just mentioned, Helixmith is a vibrant clinical development company running to phase three in the US for diabetic peripheral neuropathy and diabetic foot ulcer respectively. And also the two phase twos uh, for claudication and uh, ALS respectively, again in the USA and the phase one for the CMT, charlotte maritus disease, in this case in Seoul. And we have also successfully completed two phase one trials, one for the breast cancer and another one for coronary artery diseases. We are also expecting a three different candidates to enter phase three trials as highlighted in this gray color. For ALS, for a neuroblastoma and ovarian cancer, and chronic kidney disease. Among these gene therapy products, the candidate called uh, VM202 or Engensis is our lead product. Engensis is a plasmid DNA uh, designed to express two isoforms of hepatocyte growth factor. As the name stands for, HGF was originally discovered as a growth factor for hepatocyte. But a few years later, it was found to contain multiple biological activities such as neurotrophic, angiogenic, and anti-inflammatory activities, among others. PM202 is delivered to skeletal muscles or cardiac muscle cells, depending on indications, and by a simple intramuscular injection using regular 27G syringe, as shown in this photo. Uh, injection depth is about one centimeter, uh, one, uh, one inch. Intramuscular injection of angensis can generate four effects. And first is the generation of the damaged nerves by promoting exon outgrowth and remyelination. And also angiogenesis, namely the formation of the new blood vessels and production of the significant analgesic effect by downregulating the expression level of pain inducing genes. And lastly, amelioration of the muscle atrophy by controlling the gene expression of such genes as 
a microRNA 206. Based on these eight, eight different bioactivities, we have been targeting six different indications. On the left, a, a painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy, ALS, and Chagot Bari tooth CMP disease. On the right, diabetic foot ulcer and claudication and acute myocardial infarction. Among these different diseases, painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy, painful DPN, is most advanced indication. So I will spend the rest of my time on this program showing you key data and providing you uh, with the information on current status of ongoing phase three. DPN, diabetic peripheral neuropathy, is one of the most frequently observed complications in diabetic patients. In the USA alone, about 50% of diabetics or, or a, a, uh, almost 4.2 million people are known to suffer from painful DPN. That is to say they have to take painkillers. And about 30% of the painful DPN patients, and about that means uh, 1.3 million people are refractory in that no currently available drugs are working for them. Pain experienced by these patients is described as a burning, throbbing, a stabbing, and tingling. And despite such horrible nature of this disease, the current treatment methods are very limited. The most prescribed medicine for painful DPN is pregabalin or Lyrica, originally from Pfizer, and followed by others like gabapentin and duloxetine. And more than half of the pain, half painful DPN patients end up with using opioid like a top and tadin. All currently uh, used medicines provide a simple, a, a, a temporary pain relief, and still the analgesic effect is modest. And low tolerability and side effects severely compromise the quality of life of these patients. And sadly, and more than 40% of painful DPN patients remain untreated, have to live with the such horrible levels of pain, causing insomnia, and depression in, in an extreme case and suicide. This slide shows a history of our clinical trials for painful DPN over the last 15 years. In all cases, the principal investigator has been Professor John Kessler at Northwestern Medical School, a renowned neurologist. As shown on the left, angensis is intramuscularly injected into the calf muscle. One treatment consists of two cycles of infections on two weeks interval, eight milligram per visit, so 16 milligram total. In phase one and phase two, and one treatment was given on day zero and day 14. In phase three, two treatments were given, each starting on day zero and day 90, the three months time point. We followed the patient pain levels for nine or 12 months. Here, I'm showing you the, one of the key data from phase two. In this area, the most important parameter, indeed, the primary endpoint is the effect on pain as measured through pain diary. And this slide is the simplified version of the published paper on phase two. And first, I would like you to focus on the left side of this graph. And here, the y-axis uh, is change in pain scores from the baseline. So scaling down like this is reduction in pain. The x-axis uh, indicate months after the first injection or uh, uh, after the day zero. Since pain is a subjective index, what's important is the delta value, namely the main difference in pain levels between the placebo group, a, a indicated in gray color, and uh, a, a, a active group uh, shown in red color. As you can see here, the BM202 group and Genesis group showed a significant reduction in pain at three months time point. This trend persisted through six months, as long as nine months. The right side of the, uh, this slide shows the most striking observation made in our phase two study. Of 84 subjects who ultimately had their pain scores tested, a 49%, that is to say 60% of the study subject were not on pregabalin and or gabapentin, two of the most prescribed medicine 
uh, for painful DPN. In fact, these are the people who failed on these drugs. Our drug was remarkably more effective in patients not on these drugs. Compare the delta value with the total, and which is 1.5 a, a, a in, in, in total group, and, uh, and uh, 2.37 in non-medicated groups. Uh, this is exceedingly uh, important because these are the patients who cannot take pregabalin and or gabapentin, and they have to live with a, a horrible level of pain. Based on these data from phase one and phase two, as well as animal studies, and Genesis received the RMET designation from the FDA in 2018. RMET is one of the five expedited review programs together with fast rate breakthrough therapy, priority review, and accelerated approval. Our MEC can enjoy all the benefits of a fast track and breakthrough. VM202 or uh, Angensis uh, for DPN uh, was the first and still the only RMET designation for pain. It was also uh, the first RMET designation for highly prevalent disease and still one of the only two RMETs for prevalent disease uh, with Parkinson's disease. Encouraged by the phase two data, we conducted phase three. The first phase three, which we call 3-1, was essentially identical to phase two, except for an additional treatment at three months, uh, as indicated by these red arrows. We also conducted extension prior, a, which we call a 3-1B. Upon the, upon the FDA advice, when the phase three was more than a two-third way through, it, the blindness was kept until the end of 12 months. So we had effectively run two double-blind placebo-controlled studies, namely a 3-1 and 3-1B. The th size of the 3-1 was 500 subjects, while the 3-1B was 101 patients. Unfortunately, data from phase one study was compromised due to technical and operational errors made by vendors. So we could not derive a clear conclusion from 3-1. Fortunately, however, higher standards were maintained during the last one third stage of phase three study which coincided with the phase 3-1B extension trial. This is the result from the 3-1B extension trial. You can see remarkably, remarkable similarity between the phase two and this 3-1B study. On the left, effect of the analysis is shown in uh, pain severity in all subjects. And these arrows indicate two treatment a one starting on day zero and another one at three months time point. We can see significant pain reduction at six months and nine months and 12 months. And on the right, you see the effect in the subgroup, in this case, 50% of the study subjects, a, a, a significant pain reduction at six months, nine months and 12 months. So pain reduction uh, level, a, as you can see here, a pain reduction level was much higher in subjects not on a pregabalin and or gabapentin, and essentially a reproducing the data from phase two. So in conclusion, Engensis showed an excellent safety and a long-term analgesic effect and much higher efficacy in patients not on pregabalin and or gabapentin, two of the most prescribed drugs for painful DPM. And this has an extremely important implications for patients and market point of view. And one of the most startling discoveries is that angensis, a high analgesic effect, lasts more than eight months in the absence of drug products and in the absence of HGF gene expression, indicating that VM202 could fundamentally change the course of disease progression. Indeed, a bulk of data showed that and Genesis worked through a repairing the damaged nerves and changing the parent circuit in a fundamental manner. We have already started the second phase three, we call 3-2, and we are also planning to start third phase three, 
M-3 before the end of this year. Two trials are essentially identical. In both trials, we target painful DPN subjects, not on pre-gabalin and on gabapentin, and both are based on the adaptive design with 150 to 250 subjects in size, involving 15 sites. A two treatment will be given each starting on day zero and uh, day 90. And primary endpoint is pain reduction at six months. And the only difference is that the three, in 3-2, three we collect 12 month safety data after ending six months efficacy study. And while 3-3 is a 12 month study measuring both a safety and efficacy a throughout a 12 months, a, a, a through a 12 month study. Details of the 3-3 design are to be decided soon. In addition to DPN, and this is being developed for other indications, in which HGF and CMS signaling plays important roles in disease progression. LS phase two is going to start before the end of this year, and phase one for CMT, which is hereditary peripheral neuropathy, has just started this time, uh, for this one in Seoul. We are also doing phase three for diabetic foot ulcer and, and phase four claudication associated with peripheral artery problems. Eliximus is committed to the development of novel therapeutics for ALS. We have created a program, uh, created a program called DART, standing for defeating ALS through restorative therapeutics. Through this program, we have already developed three candidates. One using pronazimid DNA, namely Endensis BM302, and the other uh, one an AAD vector expressing HGF, and the third one based on the agonist antibody that can activate CMED receptor. AAB product and also this antibody based a, a product will enter phase one prior within the next three years. In summary of my presentation, I hope that I was able to convince you that Helix Miss is a very dynamic platform company armed with uh, multiple technologies and multiple products. The lead product is Envensis, and it, this is being tested for six different uh, in indications. The most advanced program is painful DPN. Envensis has demonstrated the therapeutic potential in two, two double blind placebo controlled studies namely phase two and phase 2-1b. And most importantly, it shows the potential as a regenerative medicine. We have just started phase, second phase three, and we will soon start another one named the third phase three. Helix Mission has recently established a DART program devoted to the development of innovative air therapeutics. We are proud of that that Helixmis is at the forefront of fight against ALS. Thank you very much for patiently listening to my fast moving presentation and I will stop here.